We have now reached the Romantic Age. This epoch was a reaction and consequence of the Enlightenment. This epoch focused on dominating feelings and the human nature instead of science. Poets and their literature had a big influence. Along with the French Revolution, the picture of justice, equality and human rights changed. The people, and especially the English writers, loved the revolution and the ideals with it. But their opinions changed quickly, and within four years they had started to hate the French Revolution and the war between England and France started. The war was won by England, but the soldiers returning from the war had difficulties to find jobs considering the great injuries they had. Poverty and sadness was a major subject of the existing poets at that time. The poets wrote poems about society's individuals. They wrote about children, the returning soldiers and the homeless people. Children were getting useful labor, people were giving less money and the big cities were getting overpopulated. After a recent event involving England and France, poets started to observe the situation in their home country, how people lived, worked, and above all, were impacted psychologically. It was not only the poets who was getting conscious about the human mind. More and more people started to pay attention to what they were feeling. It was during this time humans started to scratch the surface of the human mind. Doing these things also helped poets escape the hard reality they now lived in. According to V.J. Raymond, the literature of this period is thought by some historians to be an outgrowth of the French Revolution. He claims that although the revolution had been rejected as a political failure, its ideals lived on in arts and letters. On the other hand, although some of the poets of this period had been enthused by the revolution in its infancy, they were horrified by the violence it spawned. Poems such as Coleridge's rhyme of the ancient mariner show a respect for nature and loathing of things of human invention. The authors fled the outer world and turned to nature. They started to take an interest in the past and places far away. There was a fear of turbulence in the society as well. The middle class was afraid that the increasing poverty would affect them and that a riot was around the corner, just like in the French Revolution. Therefore, meetings with many people from the working class were forbidden to prevent that anything like that would happen. The Romantics had a big interest in the past, with a special interest in supernatural stories. Sir Walter Scott is an example to this. He used in his tales different supernatural creatures he applied to his own history. William Shakespeare was also another person that attracted the Romantics. In his plays, Shakespeare had different supernatural creatures such as fairies and witches. This was a way for everyone to escape reality. There were two streams of the Romantic literature. The first one is called Poetic Stream. During the poetic stream, the personal experiences and feelings were the most important ones. It was during this time the modern poetry was born. They saw the beauty in the most basic things, such as flowers. Even the ugliest flower had its beauty and was considered as something holy. The second one was the god extreme, the dark one. In this stream, they focused on the dark sides of the human mind. They wrote about fears, bad dreams, and madness. Jane Austen, the romantic writer that seemed to be immortal. She wrote many novels, but there were six of them that became the major ones, which also are the ones that keep getting reprinted and reinterpreted into new movie releases that attract a new audience. The most outstanding ones are Sense and Sensibility with Emma Thompson and Hugh Grant and the TV version of Pride and Prejudice with Colin, Colin Firth and Jennifer Eel. Her novels and its content seem to never get old. Austin was born on December 16, 1775 into the rural professional middle class. She was to be a seventh child and only the second daughter. Growing up, the Austin children lived in an environment of open learning, creativity, and dialogue. Jane, after completing her formal education at the boarding school, returned home permanently and sets out to pen the work First Impressions. Little did she know at the time that this single work would become her most popular and enduring piece, 
becoming the story we now know as Pride and Prejudice. The first draft was completed sometime in 1799. Jane Austen was not a typical romantic writer. She was brought up in a small town in southwest England, Steventon, Hampshire, on ideas that came from the Enlightenment. Her novels often consisted of a great sense of humor with a touch of irony. They were also often love stories and comedies. These themes made her novels attract a broad group of people, and even though her novels sh showed a laid-back content, it still shows Austen's talent for illuminating and capturing human nature, and how she characterized by an underlying seriousness and universality. Her novels and her writing paved the way for the next century's authors. They became so popular partly because they became to be a lot like Austen's own life, which a lot of people could sympathize with. Jane's writing started when she was only a child and wrote stories to amuse her family. The amount of time spent in her father's library also made her interest even bigger, and at the age of 20 she started to write her first novels. They often reflected women's dilemmas, such as marriage, which were a huge matter, also social class and gender. During Austen's lifetime, marriage for a woman meant maintaining a social position, you didn't get married for love, it was only based on financial matters. A woman during this time needed a husband to gain a financial security. In her books, she managed to show that her characters, often women, could prove that love was more important than their fortunes. Mary Shelley, 1797-1851 was an English writer who wrote Gothic novels. She is best known for her Gothic novel Frankenstein. Mary was the daughter of two famous writers. Her father was the political philosopher William Godwin and her mother was the philosopher and feminist Mary Wollstonecraft. Mary's mother passed away shortly after her birth. That is why she was educated in her father's intellectual circles. At the age of 16 years old, Mary met the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley. They had a secret relationship, because her father did not accept them to be together. She escaped with P.B. Shelley, even though her father disapproved it. P.B. Shelley was already a married man, but he still escaped with Mary. They traveled around Europe for a couple of years, and years later ended up getting married at Byron's place in Switzerland. Her novel Frankenstein had the background idea set in Villa Deodati on Lake Geneva, where Mary, together with her husband and Byron, spent some months. Byron wanted them all to write a ghost story as a competition. One night, Mary had a nightmare, and the story developed from that. Three years later, when the novel was publishing, lots of people doubted that the novel was written by an 18-year-old girl. The novel Frankenstein is about a scientist called Victor Frankenstein. He wanted to create a human being and be able to control nature. He succeeded with his mission by taking human parts from corpses and then he electrified the body he had created. So it came to life. Once Frankenstein sees what he has created, he refuses to take responsibility of his monster. Edgar Allan Poe was born in 1809 and died in 1849. He was a famous American writer, poet, and a critic. He wrote horror tales with psychological twists. He was born in Boston but was raised by his foster parents, the Allens, in Richmond, Virginia. When Poe lived in the South, he worked as a writer and a journalist, but he left the South later for New York, where he got married to his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia Clem. Virginia Clem died a few years later of tuberculosis, and because of his loss, he began to drink an excessively amount of alcohol and got a really bad health. He was not only famous for his horror tales, but also for his detective stories. Just as Mary Shelley, Poe was also fascinated by the doppelganger. Edgar Allan Poe wanted to show his reader that terror lives in our souls, and therefore he focused on just one emotion. By doing this, he takes the gothic genre one step further, writing about layers of the human mind. To sum it all up, the Romantic Age was the epoch of deep feelings where the authors were seeking for answers in the beauty of nature. The combination of new interests, new attitudes, 
and fresh forms produced a body of literature that was strikingly different from the literature of the 18th century. But that's not to say that the 18th century had no influence on the Romantic movement. Practically all of the seeds of the new literary crop had been sown in the preceding century, the Enlightenment.